We've all seen 2001 A Space Odyssey. Space is supposed to be peaceful, perfectly still and empty. Well, that's where you're wrong. Space is more like the Wild West on a bad day. There are violent magnetic storms and rogue asteroids. And now, on top of all the natural terrors, there's space jump, missile testing, used satellites, and astronaut trash are turning space into a scrapyard. And without air friction to slow it down, this space junk is orbiting the Earth at speeds of up to 25,000 miles an hour. Imagine a chunk of satellite hitting you at 25 times the speed of a Magnum 44 bullet, and you can see the problem. NASA's spacecraft and the space station need protection. So, how do they do it? March 12, 2009. A chunk of space junk is on a collision course with the International Space Station. It's just a bit bigger than a pencil, but at 25,000 miles per hour, it could potentially blow a hole in the station, killing the crew. The junk has been spotted too late for the craft to move out of the way. So the astronauts take cover in the Soyuz escape capsule. This time, the junk just misses, but it's a close shave. This bit of deadly space trash, it turns out, was part of an old booster rocket motor. NASA badly needs to defend its people from all that galactic garbage. And the fight starts here. Take a drive across the plains of Colorado and you may see something strange on the horizon. These giant golf balls house some of the world's most powerful military radar equipment. This is Schriever Air Force Base, home of the 50th Space Wing of Air Force Space Command. These guys are the most high-tech space watchers on the planet. But as well as tracking satellites, they're also on the lookout for space junk. Space junk detectives like Bill Davidson are NASA's galactic garbage men, except their job is not to collect it. They are looking for tiny spikes in the noise from military radar. Bill's radar is so powerful, he can spot an object the size of a pea floating 600 miles away. It's the best uh, source of debris data in the world. Bill and the team do their best to warn NASA's astronauts about hazardous material, but with tens of thousands of bits of space junk flying around at something like 30 times the speed of sound, there's no way of avoiding all of it. So what modern spacecraft need is what the Starship Enterprise had, a deflector shield. This is one of NASA's most remote stations, nearest town, Las Cruces, New Mexico. This facility is in the middle of nowhere, and the reason is safety, because inside this building are four massive guns. It may not look much like a gun, but this 175 feet of ultra-strong steel alloy pipework forms a gun so powerful it can fire a bullet at a staggering 17,000 miles an hour. When a gas gun like this backfired at another facility, it took out the whole building. NASA needs a super gun to replicate the effect of super-fast space junk because this is where they carry out tests on the latest designs for deflector shields. Dana Lear is one of the leaders of the deflector shield research program. Today, he's testing what the NASA guys call a Whipple shield. The idea is simple. The outer layer breaks the speed and force of the incoming junk. Then, they hope, the inner layer will protect the hull of the craft. Shock waves are set up in the particle to break it up and spreads the particulate over a larger area, kind of like uh, with the snowshoe effect, with spreading your weight out in snow. We can basically defeat that particle, that high-speed particle, in a very short distance. It's a clever theory, but how will it stand up to a shot of space junk from the super gun, traveling at 24,000 feet per second? That's good right there. A half-inch aluminum ball bearing will simulate debris and will be fired at hypersonic speeds at the shield. Once the gun is loaded and primed, the team retreat to the control bunker. After warning the base, the team takes the shot. 
High-speed cameras record the moment when the projectile tears into the outer casing. Once the team leader gives the all clear, it's time to see if the shield has done its job. This would be a catastrophic failure on the space station, and you can see how it went through the whole target and through the pressure wall. The basic Whipple shield isn't enough. It's a serious concern. The lives of astronauts are at stake. But back at Johnson Space Center, Dana has found inspiration for a new shield design in a down-to-earth technology, bulletproof vests, or to be precise, Kevlar. This shield here is a, a derivative of the Whipple shield. And as you'll notice in this shield, we put in additional layers of Kevlar. Now, the Kevlar is very good at breaking up the particle on impact. The simple Whipple shield failed the test, but will Dana's new Kevlar shield give NASA's spacecraft the protection they need against hypersonic space junk? It's the moment of truth. First impressions suggest catastrophic damage. Quite a bit of damage on the front face. However, on the rear, this would be the pressure wall. And you can see that the mass of the projectile was spread over a large surface area, which effectively stopped the projectile before it penetrated the pressure wall. So today, it was a successful test for this shield design. The space junk was broken, and its momentum dissipated by the layers of Kevlar. The deflector shield is a go. As space gets busier, the threat from space junk will increase. But so long as they're wearing one of Dana's bulletproof vests, NASA's spaceships stand a fighting chance. 